Hello everyone, welcome back to Ecuador. Now, for those that are tuning in for the first time, this is a brand new video series I'm filming with the team at BH here in this incredible country of Ecuador that focuses on the idea of combining our love of landscape and wildlife photography. Now, this is a seven part series that is released each week. And last week's episode, we focused on inspiration and kind of what brought me to the idea of combining my passion and my love of both those two genres of photography. Now, in this episode, we're focusing on organization, research, and kind of putting together your own photo adventures. We've got a lot of things to cover, so let's go ahead and jump right in. So when it comes to the origin point of just about any photo adventure out there, I think it ultimately comes down to inspiration. Like what inspires you as a photographer, as a creative to wanna to get out and shoot a particular subject or to have a particular experience? This is something that I have covered a little bit in our first video series with B&H that came out last year focused on Dingman Falls, which is a waterfall near my hometown in Eastern Pennsylvania. But it's something worth repeating and worth talking or expanding upon a little bit. Now, even though I've been photographing for 18 years professionally and I've been fortunate to travel all over the world, I'm still constantly in search of inspiration. I constantly want to be inspired to find new things that I didn't know existed. We're all on a creative journey and I think it's interesting to look at it in a more pragmatic way that we all have something to learn from each other and we all have a lot more experiences out there that are left to be had. So when it comes to actually finding that inspiration, it really comes from a wide variety of sources. It doesn't matter if I see another image from a photographer, if they've been shooting professionally like myself for a long time, or if they're brand new and they just picked up their camera. When I come across new content that makes me kind of stop in my tracks and think, wow, that's something that I actually want to photograph myself, I usually take a note of it. What's interesting is that when I started out as a photographer back in 2004, I created a bucket list. Back then I used to say, hey, I wanna to travel to South America. And now it's like, I wanna to go to Ecuador at this very particular time of the season to go visit this particular region to go see this one particular volcano or to go photograph this one very specific species. For a lot of this, this happens in the online space. I'm constantly coming across things and I'm saving other people's images or videos or reels. And that becomes that origin point. So when it comes to my own schedule, I typically book myself out anywhere between 12 to 18 months in a given year. The reason that I do that is not only because I have a lot of paid gigs, but also because I teach a lot of workshops, but also gives me the opportunity to see where the open spaces are, where I can slot in some of these bucket list experiences. I think my number one piece of advice for all of you guys watching right now is to make that list. It may sound simple, it may sound like it might not help you attain it, but at the end of the day, it's a list that you can reference that hopefully you can come back to as you save some money, as opportunities present themselves, so that you can begin to mark off some of these bucket list photo adventures for yourself. So once you've found your inspiration, what's the next step in the process? The next step in the process is actually comes down to researching this location. You've now figured out exactly what you want to try to photograph or where you want to photograph, and now you need to do the research. And the first step in that piece is going to come down to a simple Google search. Now, the key to this is to look to three to four different websites that you can cross-reference to make sure that you're getting accurate information. In these situations, I'm often looking for a handful of different types of variables or different types of information to use to make the right decision. The time of year to visit, uh, how much average rainfall is going to happen, is it hot season, dry season, is it the high season or low season or shoulder season? Is it going to be popular? Are there going to be a lot of other people around? If it comes to wildlife, is the type of species I want to photograph, are they going to be around or abundant during that time of year that I want to visit? These are very important to understand, especially when it comes to wildlife. For me personally, when I'm going around the world looking for, say, poison dart frogs, I want to make sure that I'm going to visit the country and the specific region during the rainy season because frogs like rain. And when it's rainy, they're generally going to be come down from the trees. And so it's a really key element when it comes to the type of research and planning that I need to put in and the effort I need to apply to these types of photo adventures. Now, once you've done those Google searches and you have your information, now it's time to reach out to the photo community at large, especially the ones online. There are a lot of photographers like myself that have been in this industry for a long time, including seasoned travelers, that are happy to share information with all of you. 
Each week I get a bunch of emails from people asking about the different adventures that I share on Instagram and TikTok and Facebook and Twitter, asking about how they can create their own photo adventures or go to the same places, what hotels I stayed at, which car services do I use to rent. It's a great reference point in order to find information from people that you at least admire or that you at least know and respect to get the right type of information rather than purely just relying on random strangers online. And when you get both those two pieces of information together, you have a great starting point for your adventure. So now that you found your inspiration and you've begun the process of planning your trip, it's important to understand about packing and preparing, bringing the right clothes and gear. Now, I'm not talking about photo gear, we'll talk about that in a second. I'm talking about wearing the right type of clothes, the types of environments you plan on visiting. Now, here on this Ecuadorian adventure that we're on right now with BNH, we're visiting two completely different regions. We have the Cotopaxi region right here, where we're at right now, which is high altitude volcanoes, it's cold, there's wind. And we also have the Ecuadorian jungle, which is the rainforest, humidity, bugs, and all sorts of other fun stuff. Two completely different elements that we have to plan for. So when it comes to hot environments, you wanna make sure that you work with material that is breathable, but that also wicks water. This is why I typically recommend that everyone avoid cotton. One question that I get asked a lot on my photography workshops is, can I bring my jeans? If we're going to a place like the rainforest, I generally say no. The reason for that is if your jeans get wet, which is a high probability, either from the rain in the rainforest or from sweat and humidity, is that they're gonna stay wet and damp the entire time. They simply will not dry. You wanna to stick to things like polypropylene or to different fabrics that essentially wick that water off and allow you to breathe in the process. This is pretty common for different types of traveler gear and traveler clothing out there, depending on the brands that you feel most comfortable with. When it comes to cold environments, I generally recommend using the layering system. So the three elements of the layering system are broken down into your base layer, your mid layer, and your outer layer. So your base layer is essentially the layer of fabric that is closest to your body. This is stuff generally that can be either synthetic or to be some sort of wool material. This particular layer is super important because it keeps the warmth closest to your body. Now, next up, we have our mid layer. That's something like this jacket right here. This is a puffy jacket. It's full of synthetic down uh, material that essentially allows me to keep extra heat in. So my body heat is being kept in from my base layer. Now my mid layer, this puffy layer, is, is keeping the cold out while maintaining the heat on the inside. I wanna minimize the amount of heat loss when it comes to cold environments. And then from there we go to our outer shell. That's like a rain jacket. These shells are generally pretty thin and very durable. They're meant to take a beating from the uh, outdoor environments. And essentially they are your final last resort to protect you from wind, rain, sleet, and snow. But either way, that should cover you in at least those two types of environments. I know there's a handful of others out there, but you guys can do your own research on that and show me what you've learned. And the next step when it comes to planning and research comes down to flights. Airline tickets can be expensive, and for many people out there, it becomes your roadblock or your pain point that keeps you from traveling out to other places around the world. Now, luckily, there's a handful of great resources online that can help you find affordable and cheap flights. These are things that myself and, again, other professionals out there use to make sure that we're always getting the most bang for our buck when it comes to the flights that we choose and the airlines we like to work with. Now, the two sites that I recommend the most, one is gonna be Google Flights. This is a great service that essentially allows you to set notifications up for very specific flights so that you can be notified when prices drop or they might increase. So for example, when we were planning this trip down to Ecuador, I can set a specific notification for any of the airports around New York, getting all the way down here to Quito, and then returning on a very specific day. It's gonna show us the different airlines that make those routes, and then I can flag specific ones to be notified for any different changes that might come or price drops. Over the years, I found it to be one of the best options to help me save money on flights. Now, the second choice out there is a third-party website called Scott's Cheap Flights. Now, I don't know who Scott is, but I came across his website a few years ago. Uh, he has a free service and a paid service. I do the paid service. And essentially what happens is that every single day, or you can set it up for weekly or monthly notifications, is you get an email. It's like a newsletter. And what happens is that his team scours the internet for all sorts of weird flight deals. Sometimes airlines have crazy last second deals to fill open seats. Sometimes there's discrepancies or mistakes made for prices listed online. And he'll email those out and let people know. Through his service, he uses Google Flights to help you book those flights, so he's not actually taking any money or any commission on this. 
So scottscheapflights.com is a great place to, to look and it's something that I highly recommend. How do you find people you trust on the ground to help you organize these trips? This is a common challenge for a lot of people out there, myself included when it comes to visiting an area that I haven't actually been before, specifically a country I haven't visited before. So my first recommendation is always to use recommendations from people that you trust. For me, I'm reaching out to my colleagues at National Geographic or other photographers that I know well personally to sit there and say, hey, Bob, have you been to Madagascar? And if so, do you have anyone you recommend that can help put together a trip for me? This is someone that is usually known as a fixer. It could also be a travel agent or a travel company in a, in a country. But there are a lot of scams and things out there, so you have to be careful. Now, this is usually why I say it's good to use recommendations from people you trust as your first source when it comes to finding someone to work with. Again, reach out to other photographers out there and use them as reference points. People like myself or other professionals, some of us, like I said, are very willing to help you guys out. Now the next best place to find online if you don't have a source to help you with recommendations is to look at a place like TripAdvisor. There are a few other website resources like TripAdvisor, but TripAdvisor is one of the best places because it has an online form and there's a lot of other people asking those very same questions. So sometimes when I'm visiting a new location, I will do a search on TripAdvisor to look for a very specific region, say in Bolivia, for example. And then I'll see who people are recommending for specific tours. And then from there, I'll start doing my due diligence and my research to figure out, are they a legit company? Uh, do they have a website? Can I find reviews for them outside of TripAdvisor? And then do they have contact information? These days around the world, especially in non-Western countries, almost everyone has WhatsApp connection points. And so I can use WhatsApp to connect to these people and reach out instantly and start asking questions. It's always good to do this research beforehand to make sure that you know you're working with someone that you can hopefully trust. And if you, are, if you do find yourself working with someone that you don't know or haven't worked with before, never send all the money for a trip up front in advance. Always spend a portion, maybe 20, 25%, and promise to have the rest on delivery once you arrive at the location. You never wanna be the person that's arriving at the airport waiting for someone to show up that simply never shows up. Now, in the same vein as finding a fixer or a local travel company to help you organize these trips in the country that you're deciding to visit, I also recommend that you reach out and try to find local naturalist guides. Local guides are great resources of information, especially when it comes to wildlife photography, but also for landscape and travel opportunities as well, that just have a breadth of knowledge that you simply can't get by searching for things online. They'll know where to go, what species are around, and pretty much everything about the different subjects you're trying to photograph. And so make your life a little bit simple and try to find one of these guides. The process, as I mentioned, is going to be similar. Reach out to people you know first, go on to places like Instagram, see if they've hired other individuals out there for other photographers you admire, or look at places like TripAdvisor. All these people are entrepreneurs themselves. They're constantly reaching and putting themselves out there. Even on things like Instagram and TikTok, you'll find it in their bios where they let you know where their specialties are and that they are a local guide. So you can reach out and start having those conversations and build a relationship before you actually get down and land in these countries. We're photographers, we have a lot of gear, most of us do, and the question of what to bring when we go on a specific trip always comes up. So where do you start? Again, the first place is gonna be a Google search. Look up very specifics towards the locations or the type of species you're trying to photograph. I've done this in the past in terms of what lenses to photograph bald eagles for, with, or what type of macro setups do I need for frog, uh, frog photography? All good information to have. Now, these days, it's kind of a video-centric world, so whether it's Instagram Reels or TikTok or YouTube, there's going to be a ton of information out there. For example, if you did a search for what camera gear to bring to Ecuador, you might actually find a B&H video series with this guy called Colby Brown that was filmed in Ecuador that talks about all the gear you need to bring to both the Cotopaxi and the Amazonian regions to focus on a very epic video series that they're working on, which is kind of meta because that's actually this one right now. 
So we put together a lot of that type of content. B&H puts a lot of stuff out on their uh, newsletters as well as their blog. Uh, visit my website, www.colbybrownphotography.com. We have a lot of this information as well. What's interesting is that that video is actually the next week's episode. But regardless, throughout this video, I hope you guys learned a lot. I hope you guys are planning your own adventures for next year and the years to come. And if you guys have questions, let us know. We'll try to jump in the comments, engage with you guys, and hopefully we can all get out and start traveling a bit more now that the world's beginning to open up.